Wow, what a nice surprise. I was just about to call you. Are you going to stop calling me Mr. Minister? When we are together, I feel great. And you? I am also very well. Claude, I just came to see how you are doing. We haven't seen each other in almost a month last month. You weren't also at the fraternity meeting of brothers. Last month, I have traveled to the United States. But you didn't tell me anything. Hope you've brought some good stuff back. Definitely. I also made a stopover in Europe. I brought you bottles of wine from the 1800s. I also brought you some real whiskey. Wow! Terrific. It was good to come over here to greet you. Thanks a lot. Jerry. You know, in three months my son Patrick is going to come back from the United States. He completed his studies in computer engineering. For his wedding, I thought of your daughter. I showed him the photo of your daughter. He is very interested. Personally, I think that this marriage between our children will strengthen our friendship more. Our two families will be more united. Jerry, what do you think? That's why I wanted to call you so we could meet to talk. Wow! But it's very good news. I would be very happy to have the Grand Minister of this country as my father-in-law. I would be very happy to see my daughter marry your son. It's fantastic. I'll talk to my wife about it as soon as I get home. Don't worry, I'll talk to my daughter. Okay. I think we're both in agreement on this marriage and we're going to be fine. My brother. Everything is perfect. We're going to have a drink. A bottle of champagne for this wonderful combination of our two families. Mr. Minister. Not right away. We'll do that later. I have an urgent business appointment that I need to honor. I think I'm already late. We're going to call each other anyway. More and more, we will be together to prepare for the marriage of our children. Okay, no problem my dear friend. When will the fellowship meeting be called this month? I forgot I'm going to send it to you by message, otherwise I risk giving you a false date. Claude, I'm going to take leave of you. We'll see you very soon. My dearest stepfather Jerry, you love to have so much fun. You really make me laugh. Bye, Jerry, and see you soon. Lots of things to your wife. Goodbye, Claude. Hello, Marlin. Did you sleep well? Hello, sweetheart. I slept well. And you? How are you? You were very tired yesterday and slept like a big baby. Sweetie, I am very well. This morning, I had a good rest and I have new strength. This week, I worked a lot on meetings here and there. It has not been easy. Oh yes, it's true, I saw it yesterday as well. You told me that we were going to talk about a subject that concerns Daniela, but as you were tired, I didn't want to bother you. I told myself that today we will have all the time as it is the weekend. Sweetie, you did well. Yesterday, I was very in joy, I could not explain things properly. What is my love about? Our daughter Daniela is getting married. And not just anyone. She is going to marry the son of my friend Claude, the greatest and most respected minister in this country. Wow! What happiness! It's really great! I am very happy. We will be more and more honored and respected in this country. Who is this son he's talking about? He is in the United States. He will be back in three months. He has just finished his studies. He is a computer engineer. Wow! It's extraordinary! Our son-in-law is the minister's son, an intellectual and well-educated man. Darling, I have concerns about Daniela. What is this concern? You know your daughter is no longer with us. She became a Christian. She has a habit of saying that she would never marry anyone who is not a Christian, or someone whom God did not advise her to marry. Let go of all that crap. She will marry whoever I, Jerry, want. Will we see between me and her who is stronger? Honey, our daughter is 35. She is an adult. You cannot her to marry the minister's son. Darling, don't worry, I have my strategy. I know what to do to coerce your daughter. You'll see, she'll accept. Trust me. Even if she refused at first, she would eventually agree. We'll see what happens. 
Have you seen this bastard, this useless bastard who is in his life? I wonder how Daniela can accept this poor, this vulture in her life. Someone who comes from a family of absolute poverty. This young man only wants our wealth, he only wants our money. It's a sapro fight. Sweetie, keep calm. I'm not dealing with this man who can't even match the shoes I'm wearing. I am dealing with Daniela. I cannot stand in front of this gentleman to greet me because I am afraid of being contaminated by his first-class poverty. Honey, you're right. You got the word right. He is a man sick of poverty. Darling, I am very hungry. Go give orders to cook food for me. Honey, I've already given instructions for everything we're going to eat today. I don't know why they're not ready yet. They were supposed to call us since the table was set. I'm going to call them to see if they're done. Honey, you're going to eat soon. Any. Any come here. A and I, I'm calling you. Ma'am, please, here I am. How many times do you want me to call you before you answer me? What is the role of your ears that are on your head? Are your ears an ornament? No, madam. Excuse me, madam. I was in the guest room. I was doing the cleaning. Call me the cook. Since all this time, he has not yet finished cooking. Okay, madam, got it. Please, madam, here I am. What is going on? It takes you a century to cook. Are you cooking for the whole world? No, madam. Excuse me, madam, I'm almost done. I noticed that there was no mustard and ketchup. I went to the supermarket to buy this. All that's left is dessert to prepare. I'll be ready in 30 minutes at the most. Okay, hurry up, my husband is hungry. Thanks, madam. Lord, I give you all the glory for this wonderful day that you have given me. Thank you for all the graces you have given me. Thank you for the ability and the strength you have given me to be able to work. It's time for me to go home. I'm going to go see Moses before I go home. Protect me and take me home safely, in the name of Jesus. Amen. I think maybe we'll go to the supermarket to do some shopping when we see each other. Good evening, darling. Excuse my delay, I'm not going to finish the job quickly. I thought I was going to finish until 2 p.m. The file that I processed and analyzed took me a lot of time. It was more complicated than I thought. Good evening my love, it does not matter at all. The main thing is that you are there safely. How was your day? You don't usually go to work on Saturdays. Yes my darling, you're right. Dad called me last night to ask to work on an urgent file. He's usually the one who works on Saturdays. But this week he's been very busy. It was a very tiring day. But I give glory to God. And you, how did you spend the day? What can I tell you? Daniel as usual, nothing changed, nothing special. I wonder until when. Sometimes I ask myself what you expect from me, what you expect from me. Look at my situation, I have nothing to offer you. Look at my family, they are poor. You and I are totally opposed to each other. My parents are needy. I have absolutely nothing you can rely on. Your parents are rich, you have a high school education, you have big degrees. On the other hand, I did not, because of lack of resources. Daniela, what are you doing? What are you counting on? Are you sure what you're doing? You're not going to regret it later. There are well-off men who court you and want to marry you. But you refuse. You are 35 years old, you can't see that time is running out. We've been together for two years, but there's been no change. Moses, I've always asked you not to say it's business as usual. Every day that comes up, God does something new. If you can't see anything, that doesn't mean God is inactive or doing nothing. The Bible declares in Lamentations 3 verses 22 to 23 the goodness of the Lord has not been exhausted. His compassions are not coming to an end. They are renewed every morning. O oh God! How great is your faithfulness! Every day that dawns, God does new things. Each day that dawns, you approach the day set for changing your story. I rely on God and on what God has told me. I trust God and know that He can never deceive or betray me. 
I know what God has told me about you and the two of us. I know the alliance that exists between God and me. So please never ask me again what I expect from you or what I hope from you. I love you very much, Moses, but know that I love God more than you. When it comes to our relationship, I don't look at you first, but I look at God first. I love you and I will go to the end with you. We will overcome the mountains, the obstacles, the challenges, the humiliations, the suffering, the hunger, the thirst together. Moses, you are a great man. You are a rich man, a billionaire. Stop looking today, and yesterday, but look tomorrow, that is to say your future. I believe in God and I believe in you too, darling. I know that you will do great things and your name will have great renown in the country and around the world. Be strong, Moses, I love you and I am with you. I know God's plan for us, but I don't know the strategy that he will use to lead us into that plan. Thank you so much Daniela. You are a woman that every man on this earth will want to have. I love you too darling. I give glory to God for your presence in my life. You know boss, it's getting late. We're going to the supermarket to do some shopping and I'll take you home before I go home. I forgot to ask you how are mom and dad doing? Dad and mom are doing well by the grace of God. He must have already gone to work. He is so tired. But there's nothing he can be at his age only a security guard. It is not easy. God is going to do it. He is in control. Let's go, sweetie. Here you go, $5,000. You keep that with you, you never know. Daniela. My darling, my boss, my CEO, my billionaire. I really like you, you are my sweet honey. You are my love. Thanks for everything, sweetie. God bless you. Bless. Amen. Amen, my boss. May he bless you as well. Amen, darling. Honey, you're taking everything mom lacks at home. Don't hold back because of money. We are also going to take fruit juice and vitamins for the old parents. Okay, okay. But you have to make the choice yourself because you know more about it than I do. Daniela, you're used to shopping for the old lady. You're more gifted than me. Okay, my boss, you let me do it. We're going to get deodorants, shower gels, and toothpaste. Aside from mom's shopping, don't forget your favorite chocolate. You take it for everyone. Your brother and sister too. Oh, women, when they come to shop, they transport the whole store. You are not serious? All right, let's go to the cash register. I'll come back tomorrow if I forget something. I am used to putting everything on paper. I'm not going home with you. I am very tired. Okay, no problem Madam Billionaire. You didn't lie. I have that belief. I am the future wife of Billionaire Moyes. Good evening Dad, how are you? Good evening Daniela, my darling daughter. I am very well and you? I give all the glory to God. Thanks to His grace, I am very well. Dad, you told me to urgently come see you after work. Is there a problem? No, my daughter, there is no problem. It's pretty good news. Oh good. What is this good news? Is it in relation to our business? No, my daughter, it's about you. You have an amazing suitor. Oh good. Wow. And who is this famous suitor? The son of our country's greatest minister, my dear friend Claude. His son went to the United States for his studies. But he will definitely be back in two months. He is a computer engineer. This is a very big opportunity for you, my daughter. You're going to join a very big family. You're going to be the stepdaughter of this country's greatest minister. Everywhere you go, you will be highly respected. My daughter, I am very happy for you. Dad, I'm sorry to disappoint you. There is no question of me marrying the son of this country's greatest minister. Where I am, I am already respected and honorated. This marriage is seriously impossible. Daniela, you answer me categorically like that. You no longer respect your dad who raised you like that. What does that mean? That's what we're going to see. Dad, I don't think I disrespected you. I have the right to say yes or no. 
You talk about my marriage and remember very well that I am 35 years old, I am no longer a little girl. With that being said, I think I'm going to leave. I am very tired. I came from work. Okay, you can leave. We're going to see who wins. Goodbye dad. Have a very nice evening. Lots of things to mom from me. Goodbye, Daniela. Think about what I said to you, otherwise I will make radical and strict decisions against you. Hello my darling daughter. How are you doing? Hello darling mom. I am very well. I bless the Lord. What a morning visit. I went out to do some shopping and stopped by to say hello. Your daddy is at home. It is very good. Thank you very much for your visit. It makes me very happy. My daughter Daniela, have you thought about what your father told you about your marriage? We love you and we want you to be happy. Your dad and I want to see you in good hands in a big family. I knew that's what you were there for. Mom, don't worry about me. I am big and mature enough to do what is right for me. I don't have time to think about that. My decision is firm and I am categorical about it. I am a child of God and I am not going to marry anyone who is not a Christian. I have a man in my life and I love him with all my heart. Daniela what's wrong with you? Are you sick? You're the daughter of the CEO of the country's biggest corporations. Marry a poor person, a poor person, a barren person, a wanderer, a seedy person, a crook like that. You call this thing fiancé? You're embarrassing me. Don't make me vomit. What an opprobrium you put on our family. In any case, expect radical decisions. You're nothing but a jerk. Mom, everything you say means absolutely nothing to me. My fiancé is not at all everything you just said and neither did nobody is born with a diamond spoon in their mouth. I'm sure you didn't marry dad while he was a millionaire. I didn't marry your dad while has billions. Admittedly, he wasn't like that thing you want to marry. I'm really sorry, but that's not possible. No marriage to the minister's son. Okay, we'll see who wins. You want to tell us that you are stubborn? But we are more stubborn than you are. You will find who will have the last word goodbye Daniela. Goodbye mom and have a good day. Love you my darling mom. Hello Moses my darling, how are you? Wow, Daniela, what a nice surprise. I'm fine, sweetie. And you, didn't you go to work today? I am very happy to see you. No, my billionaire, my boss. I asked for permission today to spend the whole day with you. I'm going to see dad and we're going to go out for fast food and go stay at the beach or the park where is dad? He went to church. No, sweetie, it's in the room. He has just finished his prayer. Mom went out to her business. Yes, I know mom won't be there. Please call me dad. Okay, sweetie, give me a moment. There's a problem. No. My love, it's to wish him happy birthday. Who told you that it's his birthday today, darling? I knew that since last year. It was in a chat and I kept the date. Because Moses, you're very precious to me. Thanks darling. You are a gem. I'm coming. I am waiting for you. Hello Daniela. My daughter, how are you? Hello dad. I am well by the grace of God. And you? I give all the glory to God. I am well because of his grace. Daniela, I would like to say thank you sincerely for all that you do to Moses and to the whole family. Thank you so much, my daughter. Dad, let's give glory to God, dad. Happy birthday. May God protect you and give you health and strength, so you can see the billionaire Moses will soon become. Amen. Who told you today is my birthday? Moses? Moses didn't tell me anything. He is surprised. I brought you this envelope. Thanks, girl. God bless you. Let him give you back a hundredfold. You will be at peace and very happy in your home. Nobody will disturb you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Your household is full of milk and honey. 
in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Dad. Lots of things for Mom. Okay, see you later. May the Lord protect you. Darling. I wanted us to come here to discuss seriously the two of us and also to pray, in order to put everything in God's hands. I don't want you to freak out or worry about anything. The Lord is with us. Victory is on our side. What is going on, sweetie? There's a problem. My dad wants me to marry the son of this country's greatest minister. It seems that the latter is in the United States for his studies and will definitely return in a month according to my calculation, because it's been a month since Dad told me this. Oh good. And what did you say to him? What does your mom say? I told him it was out of the question. It's not going to work. My mom is in favor of this marriage and they said that they will make radical decisions. They can't make any decisions other than disinherit me, block my assets, and kick me out of the house. I am 35 years old and an adult. Something tells me that this is where they will go to coerce me and they are going to tell themselves if they take everything away from me, I will capitulate because it is impossible for me to live without luxury, without wealth. I have my ten fingers. I'm going to work, sweetie. What do you think you're going to do? What if you listen to your parents? I don't want to see you suffer. Living in poverty is not easy. You're not used to it. I can do everything through him who strengthens me. I can't listen to my parents or do what my parents tell me at the expense of God. The Bible states in Matthew 10, verse 37 He who loves his father and mother more than me is not worthy of me. I trust in God. I know I won't be ashamed and confused. Moses, if he drives me out, I'm going to rent a small apartment and look for work. I'm going to take a few precautions before he decides to do something. I'm going to open an account and put some money aside. I'm going to look for a small apartment to rent. Darling, let us trust in God and put everything into prayer. Don't worry about me at all. Moses, I love you, okay? I understood we're going to put everything back in God's hands. I love you too, Daniela, darling. The Bible declares in the Book of Song of Songs 8, verse 7 that large areas cannot quench love, and rivers will not overwhelm it. When a man offered all the goods in his house in exchange for love, he was met with nothing but contempt. Darling, with God, we will have victory. Let us be strong and courageous. Tomorrow we will go look for a small apartment together. Okay, got it, sweetie. I think we need to pray seriously. I'm going to go to fast for a seven day. As you go to work, you will be in communion with me. You will just do what you can because you've been working a lot lately and you're going to be very busy. Okay, I understood my billionaire. You know darling, regardless of your current situation, I love you and I am very proud of you. Thanks darling. I too am very proud of you. We are going to pray to the Eternal. Almighty God, our God you who are the master and the owner of our destiny. We want to say thank you for our lives our engagement and thank you for any situation. Before calling us on this journey, you knew the obstacles, the difficulties we will have to overcome the challenges we will have to face. Because we have agreed to walk on the path that you have set for us, we have the firm conviction that you are with us and that you will show your power to fulfill your promises in our lives, in this marriage that you have planned for your glory, Lord. Strengthen us, support us, and protect us. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Hello Dad, did you sleep well? You left very early this morning. Hello my son, I am very well. I left very early this morning because I had a very urgent matter to deal with. But Dad, your friend's daughter, why didn't she come to the airport to welcome me? She was supposed to come spend the night with me because I am his fiance. Personally, I cannot deal with a girl in this category. She has to run after me. She works for her dad's company. She is so busy. You know Patrick, she's a great girl. She will bring you good luck. She has a great destiny. You know that your dad can't pick just anything for you. I'm going to go to her office to visit her. The driver will accompany me. Tell him to bring you to Mr. Jerry's company. 
Daniela is his daughter's name. Okay, Dad, I'm going to go see her. See you later, Dad. See you later, my son. Miss Daniela, hello. Good morning, sir. What right do you have to come into my office without knocking on the door? You shout as if you were in a schoolyard. Where are your good manners? A little bit of respect. Here, it's a workplace. We are not at the market. Who are you and who are you looking for? I'm Patrick, your fiancé. As far as I know, I don't have any fiancé named Patrick. I am the son of the greatest minister. Your fiancé? You didn't even come to meet me at the airport and spend time with me. It is a great opportunity for you to become my wife and to be a part of our family. You have to run after me, or I'm going to replace you. Mr. Patrick, I am not your fiancé. I don't see what relationship there is between us for me to come and greet you at the airport and spend time with you. I am not one of those girls who run after you. What kind of girl are you? You're worthless. You can't measure up to all the girls that I, Patrick, go out with. I have a fiancé in the United States. She is not archaic, uncivilized, village like you. Go and see yourself elsewhere. You are primitive and uneducated. You're just a fool, ill-mannered, impolite. Thank you very much, Mr. Patrick. Get out of my office, or I'll call security. Okay. Goodbye. Daniela, you've crossed the line. You went too far. I'm not going to allow it. Enough is enough. Enough is enough. The minister just called me. All angry. How dare you insult his son? What rudeness on your part. But Dad, I did not insult the minister's son. Rather, it was he who insulted me and I asked him to leave my office. Ask me for my version of the events. Just because the minister and his son told you what happened doesn't mean it's true. What is your decision about this marriage? I will not marry the minister's son. It's out of the question. Okay, it is not a problem. I'll let you marry whoever you want, but you won't have anything from me anymore. I'm taking all of your inheritance. I'm going to block all the bank accounts I've opened for you. I'm taking back the car I bought for you. You will leave the house that I bought you and you will no longer work in my company. You're bringing me back everything I bought for you. All of these decisions take effect this morning. Take everything you have in the office and go out. Give me the keys of the car and the house. Dad, I agree with your decision. Thank you for allowing me to marry who I want to marry. I'm giving you the car key. I have my effects to take at home. I'm going to take my things out and give the keys to the driver. I'm going to give you the house documents. I am giving you a power of attorney so that you can change the names because my name is on the papers. Here is the USB stick for all the files that I have processed. Thank you, Dad. I love you very much, and I will always carry you in my heart. I accompany you so that you take all your things home. You won't take anything I bought for you, even clothes. No problem, Dad. Thank you so much. Dad, I've finished packing. I'm going away. Be well. Dad. I have you in my heart. Bye, Dad. When you change your mind, you know where to find me. Goodbye. Brothers and sisters, part two of this series is coming. Brothers and sisters, that's it all for this video. If you like this video, feel free to like it, comment and share around you so that many souls be saved and restored. And don't forget to subscribe to the Sentinel channel so you don't miss any of our upcoming videos. God bless you.